Today I'd like to talk about KU band satellite dishes and compare two types of KU band satellite setups, stationary dishes and motorized ones. KU band satellite dishes look like these. They're anywhere from 33 to 48 inches around, although sometimes they are oval shaped or elliptical like these ones. And they are much smaller than the other type of satellite dish used for free satellite TV, C-band. We'll talk about motorized dishes first. A motorized KU band satellite actually has a motor that moves the dish for you from satellite to satellite as you switch channels. And these types of setups have lots of pluses. The most obvious is that you can get several satellites using only one satellite dish. And that's great if you don't have room for multiple satellite dishes or maybe you can only have one dish set up for some reason. Another advantage to this type of setup is that you only need one coax cable installed between your dish and your receiver. And that single coax brings the signal from your satellite dish to your receiver and brings voltage from your receiver back to power the dish motor. Motorized dish setups can be really cool, but there's a few other things that you should consider as well. First of all, the cost of the motor. Motors have uh, gone up quite considerably in the last year or so. So that's something that can add uh, significantly to the cost of a system like this. The other thing is, and uh, without going too far beyond the scope of this video, um, setting up a motorized KU band dish can be very finicky. There's a lot of moving parts, so to speak. First of all, you have to have a post or a pole that is absolutely plumb and uh, rigid. You don't want it moving around. If that's not perfectly plumb, you're going to have problems right from the start getting, getting the motorized system to work. The other thing is, is that the uh, motor itself has a, a bracket on it that is going to need to be adjusted to your your latitude as well there's another adjustment that must be made called the declination angle and all of these things must be set correctly for your location if they're not set correctly you're going to have a lot of problems getting your system to work properly the other thing too is that there are a set of um, commands that must be programmed into your receiver all of the satellites that you want to be able to receive with your motorized dish have to either be set up in DISEC 1.2 or U cells. Very briefly, DISEC 1.2 and U cells are a series of commands that you have to set up in your receiver's menu with the satellites that you wish to track with your motorized dish. The setup of a motorized dish can be pretty involved. So these are some things to think about before you spend the money on a system. One other detail about motorized setups is that there's always a bit of lag time between channel changes between satellites. So let's say that your dish is on 87 West and you want to watch something over on 125 West. Well, you're going to have to wait probably 15, 20 seconds for the dish to move and the new channels to tune in. But we're talking seconds here. It's not going to take hours. If you're willing to spend the money on the equipment and to invest the time in setting things up properly, then a motorized KU band dish can be a great system to have. Now we'll talk about fixed or stationary satellite dishes. Generally speaking, when you have a fixed or stationary satellite dish, you're talking about fixing it on one satellite per dish. So that means that if you wanted to capture, say, three satellites, you're going to need three dishes. The only way to capture more than one satellite with a single dish would be to have some kind of multi LMB setup, like on a Shaw dish or maybe one of those brackets that you can mount like six LMBs to. Setting up a fixed or stationary KU band dish is definitely a lot more simple. There's no motors to worry about. And there's also a little bit more of a margin of error since you're only trying to get one satellite, um, let's say for example that you mount your uh, satellite dish post and it's not exactly level or plumb. Well, if it's off a little bit, that's okay because usually there's a little bit of wiggle room um, there that you can adjust your dish to still get the uh, satellite uh, even if uh, your setup isn't perfect. 
One other big advantage of a single fixed satellite dish is that there's no real setup in the receiver menu. Once your dish is aimed correctly, all you have to do is make sure your L and B is set correctly and then run a blind scan. And a few potential drawbacks to these types of systems. Number one is that the more satellites you want to get, the more dishes you need. So the cost of buying multiple satellite dishes could certainly add up. Also, you need a lot more room to set up multiple satellite dishes. And for some people that might be uh, considered an eyesore or they just don't have the room to do that, possibly. That could eat up valuable uh, space in your yard that you might want to use for something else. Something else to consider is that you're also going to be dealing with a lot more coax cable. You're going to have to find a way to combine all of those satellite signals into one cable to your receiver and that's where a dissect switch is probably going to be helpful that will combine all of those satellite signals into one cable to be sent to your receiver and a dissect switch does take some programming in the receiver menu in order to set it up to get it working correctly and one big advantage of using a dissect switch to combine satellites is that the switching between channels and satellites is instantaneous. There is no waiting, no lag time at all. Because a dissect is an electronic switch, it automatically switches satellites as you change channels. So it's pretty much like flipping through channels on cable or with an antenna. There is no lag time at all. So to wrap this video up, there are lots of different angles to consider in terms of time, cost, space, and simplicity of setup when you are deciding whether or not to use a motorized or fixed KU band satellite dish setups. Some people may opt for a combination like I have. It's really a personal choice. And if you're interested in more information on helping you decide what kind of system that you're looking for, then check out my channel. I've got lots of information that can help you get started.